Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. Special guest is here with us in the studio today. This is David Crowder. Great to see you, man. Great to be here, man. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're, you're touring oh, and no, gigging. No. And it's not hard to get us over here. Yeah, this you've been amazing. here before, right? Absolutely. This is like a, this is like going to Six Flags or something. It's, like, <laughs> it's amazing. This is like the playground right here. And there's even a ride, right? There's a slide, so it you, feels see, like you, it. you even consider it's, it's a amusement park. Exactly. <laughs> All the guys are out there right now. I'm like, I don't know if we're going to get them back to the venue tonight. That's what I'm worried about. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> put up a curfew, right? Uh -huh. The Sweetwater curfew is 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> back on the bus. And then y'all are like blowing up, man. Like the whole, uh, you're expanding yeah, like the, twice the size. Yeah, the new distribution center going in and stuff. Incredible. So yeah, yeah it's a, well, knock on wood, we're, we've been blessed, right? Yeah, I love it. It's, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, yeah, we love what we do. So speaking of loving what you do, uh, I've, I'm intrigued by the new album, I Know a Ghost. It, uh, okay, that's it, a non-committal word. <laughs> it, it's a good word. I'm very fascinated by what <laughs> you've done here. It's a very interesting album. No, <laughs> it's, I, it's what uh, the label said. I, 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 love the, I love the amalgam of all the things that you brought together there. And you kind of started that back with Neon Steeple yeah. and, and American Prodigal, but it feels to me like you've really brought it together in a kind of an artistic kind of a statement with this, okay. this album. Tell us a little bit about that, how you bring all those disparate things together. Man, uh, I just chase what I like. and. Um, I've been in Atlanta, Georgia now for almost five years, mm -hmm. and um, when I got to Atlanta, I really wanted, so when I started the solo thing, so I was, I was doing like, I was basically just like helping out with our church in Waco, Texas, a bunch of college kids at Baylor University. I felt somewhat musically inclined, so I thought I could help out on our Sunday mornings and stuff, and, right. and, uh, and that's how I got into this whole thing. And we were basically, the David Crowder Asterix Band was basically just like the church band. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of that deal, I started, I, 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 took, a, I took about a year, a year and a half, or, uh, or maybe two, I don't know what it was, who, I, Mass Hard. And, um, and um, I didn't know if I was gonna do music or not. And then when I got on the solo thing, the first thing I wanted to do is put all the computers away Mm -hmm. And just just make porch music. I wanted I wanted to see if we could get that same energy level, um, with just you know foot foot you know I, I guess foot and hand music you know right uh, foot stomping and hand clapping and and a, a good time together. So that's where it started. And by the time I've been in Atlanta, Georgia for five years, I just realized, and, and especially with us with the cultural conversations that are going on now, mm -hmm. I just think we're so much closer to one another than we think we are right and and especially when like um you know jesus is like hey love your neighbors yourself that's tough but you got to go outside your front door and maybe go next door if you're gonna <laughs> even know your neighbors so sure what i've been trying to do musically uh what i'm trying to do lyrically is just allow the church to sing that's all i'm trying to do mm -hmm. and then musically i'm trying to demonstrate that we're closer together than we think we are. And so I absorb stuff, get wound up about stuff because of the friends I have, and they get me wound up on things, and then I just try to squish them all in the same place at the same time. Right. And I think that it's really interesting to model um, the neighborly thing, you know? Right. And in the ATL, it's a very diverse, beautiful, uh, wide, um, it's an international city. And so I'm trying to like um, put my, my favorite things in one place at the same time that after being there for five years. Right. Yeah, right, right. so that's it. That's it, why it's, it's kind of, like you said, it's pretty broad. Right, The right. record's pretty broad. The, the danger with doing that, though, and what you have done very successfully is brought all those things together because what can happen is if you put EDM with folk music, <laughs> they can sound like they're... <laughs> It can sound cheesy almost because right. it's like you're trying to force something Very in. Very contrived, like hey, yeah, man, yeah. And, and then you've got the Southern Gospel aspect of it, and you've got some, you know, some distorted guitars in there and all that stuff. So, yeah. what is the trick? To, man, to I don't know. I think I think it's uh, it, it's just going to sound worse than what uh, it's going to sound super trite. But I think it's authenticity. I think it's mm -hmm. it's um, chasing. I usually have a hinge song. Uh, for each record that defines the tonalities that'll be in a record mm -hmm. and I chase that one down the, for, for the I Know a Ghost record It was actually the song I Know a Ghost if I could get that to work Then the rest of it is going to be like, like now. I know now. I know here's my here's my parenthetical that this thing sits in And so all the vocabulary sits right my, my lexicon is right here, you know, right? And so that helps me to to have uh, lines that I'm, I'm drawing drawing in coloring in whatever you want to call it, but mm -hmm. Um, I think it's it's most of the time it's one song that will let me see how broad I can go, and then the rest of it kind of falls in into that vocabulary somehow. Right. And, uh, but the main thing for me is can I 
can I, do I like it? You know, if yeah. I like, if, I, if I'm vibing to it and I'm not thinking about all the rest of it, if mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, I love this, then I think that's, that's like real. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what translates, you know, instead of being a contrived, like, hey, this is gonna be a little kitschy. Uh, we're gonna stick this and that together because that's hot right now, but uh, that's not where my ear goes. My ear goes to like, what's moving me winds me up to like make something. You know what I mean? When mm -hmm. you when you when you engage in something that expands yourself, right? Or your chest or your mind or whatever, it it makes you want to make something. It makes me want to make something. Right. So when I when I feel like I want to make something, I try to make what it was that made me feel that. You know, like ah, oh, I felt something. I want to make somebody else feel something. That's right. it. Right. That's right. as simple as it gets to me. Yeah, right. That makes sense. So does the, the process start then with, uh, does the process start in the same way for a song like I Know a Ghost as for Red Letters, which is much more piano based, or, or some of the other songs that have a little bit more of the acoustic That's a great kind of a thing? Question. Um, they, they, those are two different songs, yes. Mm -hmm. So for I Know a Ghost, what I did for the majority of the record was um, I hit up a bunch of uh, people who make tracks for hip hop guys. And uh, I don't know, man, you watch those documentaries and Jay-Z walks in a room and dude's just like scrolling through songs and everybody's like, mm, mm, mm. And then all of a sudden, bam, the room changes, air changes, and all, he's, he's, he's on the mic. And now we just had a hit song happen. Right. Um, so I would get Dropbox folder links or whatever, you know, file sharing thing they got. Um, and it'd be like 12 songs sitting in a folder, like check these out. And it would be just like a verse chorus kind of idea, like an attitude of a song. Mm -hmm. And I just do that, I just scroll through, and then all of a sudden, the song would just write itself. And I'm like, oh, I could do this forever. Now I know why Drake puts out like 14 records a year. Like I'm like, <laughs> duh, this is, this is easy, man. Let's do this all the time. Um, so it, it was fun then trying to in, in, uh, inject uh, that Appalachian, like uh, that porch music, mm -hmm. that foot and hand music into uh, into those tracks, um, and but Red Letters definitely a piano start. That's right. a that's a bam, 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 bam. and then then you write the song. The others, most of the other ones, there's a few that were like that, or like a guitar start, or but most of them were track oriented. And the track just told me what to do. It, mm -hmm. it sounds a little weird, but you mm -hmm. know, it's like track says. Hey, sing this. <laughs> right. So it does start with the track, and then you add the lyrics on top, or do you have a pile of lyrics sitting, and you this this is going to work with this track, or this? It kind of happens all manner of ways, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh sometimes the track would happen. It's kind of like when you pick up a guitar, like if you're writing on a guitar. Sometimes if you just change guitars, the guitar says something different, you know. Like mm -hmm. if you pick this guitar up, it's like, oh, this guy wrote this song, you know, uh, or or a particular space keyboard space, like a Rhodes was going to say something different than that piano you were just on, you know. It's like. It sort of writes itself. I do have, I do have, I'm always like um, thinking and documenting in my phone lyric ideas and stuff, yeah. but for the most part, I write into, into a, uh, a framework. So uh, the three records I've done as a solo artist, Neon Steeple, American Prodigal, and I Know a Ghost, it's, a, it's like a, uh, it's a trinity. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, it's like, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So I knew I was, I was, I was kind of going uh, for the Holy Spirit thing on this one. Uh, first one was big meta. Neon Siebel was like Father, like mm -hmm. meta Google Maps zoom out version of uh, the narrative, and then uh, American Prodigal, a little more uh, personal. Uh, so Son, you know, kind of thing, and then uh, uh, I know a Ghost was like Holy Spirit. So I knew I had an idea that I was writing into, and so that helps me a, mm -hmm. a lot to, to jot lyrics down and stuff. Okay. So I'll have like a collection of stuff going, and I don't know, I'm bad at like uh, f storing things to find them later. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff around, and I think it finds its way back up when it needs to, but uh, there's probably a lot of stuff sitting around that I don't know where it is. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you, you so have it's a really, it's more like, in the moment, I'll write into the moment. Okay. And um, I don't really, uh, there are times though where I'm like, oh man, I remember blah, blah, blah. And it feels like putting a puzzle together sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, it feels like you're trying to put a puzzle together at times. And it's like, there's the course over there, you know? Right. And then I try to find where that was and it's, 
I don't have anything labeled, so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a lot of really lot of searching, awful right? voice memos. That are like, <laughs> wow, that was a bad. You need somebody following you around with a database to keep track of all this stuff. I right? need somebody to That's go through it. my stuff. There but you go. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so do you uh, do you differentiate between songs that you uh, you see as ending up as being more a congregational kind of a song versus a, a Man, an artistic I song? I, I'm bad, I'm terrible at that. I'm really I'm really bad at that. Um, and I blame Eddie Vedder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, I remember when I first started getting into the like helping with the church deal. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody was telling me, here's what you got to do. You got to write in these keys for congregational singing so that everybody, like, here's where the male voice sits, you know, universally. Here's where the, and I go to this uh, arena show in Dallas. I'm in Waco at the time. I go to this Pearl Jam show in Dallas. And, man, we, everyone, every, all 20,000 of us are singing at the top of our lungs everything that's happening. <laughs> and Eddie has not thought one second about, like, keys right. <laughs> and what's good for <laughs> group singing you know and so right. um i feel like i feel like um i'm bad at that and so i don't know i don't know how to accommodate the congregation i just know that most of the lyrics are are intentionally gathering us and letting us announce things together either to one another or it's just uh we're, it's formative, mm -hmm. I guess, and so I think that's what's wonderful about singing is like we could get together and sing anything, and you feel closer to one another. You know, sure. it's the room changes, and we're together, and and when you when you turn that to be intentionally saying something that's uh, formative, um, I, I think we're we're changed by it. So I'm I'm uh, I'm I kind of I don't know I'm not good at that. You right. know, right? Yeah, I understand. You won't find my stuff on. Uh, planning center. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm on the planning center deal. Right. Isn't that the, isn't that the uh, software that everybody uses, church planning center? Okay. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed right. it. There you go. So with an album like I Know a Ghost with so much of an EDM influence in some of the songs, how do you take that onto the stage then? Are you using tracks or are the players recreating that? Man, or that we, uh, so we do have tracks running, um, but they're really minimal. Um, just because it's more fun, like you can, you can, I've got six guys with me, so um, our MD is doing that a whole lot, and he is incredible. J.R. Collins is his name, and he raps too. He's like, he's, he's uh, um, on that No Rival song mm -hmm. on the record, he, that's J.R., he wrote that, and, um, but it's amazing. Um, the guys are just incredible that I'm getting to play with. They're absolutely incredible. So we don't have to have a lot of, it's mostly like pad-ish, and um, instructions. Yeah. <laughs> so we're running tracks to tell me what to do, basically. <laughs> like, course in one, two. <laughs> yeah. So I don't forget where I am. It's You're in a, Cincinnati. <laughs> right. So it's a teleprompter, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so tell us about finding the musicians. What do you look for in musicians that you want to have uh, on road with you? <laughs> um, man, I don't know. It's kind of like the songs. They just kind of blow my... Like, um, so the first guy, this is, this will explain all of it. Uh, first guy that, and he's still here, um, Kenny Hudson, um, is the banjo. We've got two auxiliary uh, players that play mandolin, one mandolin, violin. Kenny's like pedal steel, dobro, mandolin, guitar, blah, blah, blah. Appalachian-y kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, Kenny uh, came to me by way of a, uh, this guy, this friend of mine who lives in Nashville, he's a singer-songwriter dude, and um, he, uh, we were after, after church one day when I'm just deciding to do the solo thing. I'm like, hey man, first thing I need though is a banjo player. Because you know, I'll put the computers away, I like, right. but I know I need a banjo player. I need a banjo. He's like, I got your guy. His name's Kenny Hudson. I'm like, oh man, give me his number. And he tells me kind of what he was, he was, he was playing a pedal steel for Over the Rhine, one of the most incredible musical moments as a consumer that I've ever had was one night at this festival uh, outside of Chicago where Over the Rhine was playing and Kenny was playing pedal steel. And nice. I was just, just, it was it was a moment. And I'm like, uh-uh, that guy? And he's like, oh yeah, he, he's your banjo player. I'm like, amazing, give me his number. I go outside immediately out of the restaurant. I call Kenny Hudson, I'm like, hey man, my name's Crowder. Put a little outfit together. 
and I'm looking for a banjo player. Oh, I don't play banjo, he tells me. I'm like, well, I'm sitting with Ryan Horn. He says, oh, yeah, I play banjo for Ryan Horn. I'm like, you're hired. So I'm like, I don't play banjo. I play banjo. So that's how they all came to me. Uh, the Like the auxiliary percussion player, we got a drummer and a percussion player who's just got, I mean, I don't even know, it's like a yard sale over there where he is. I mean, for real, I think he picks up stuff on the street every day, but uh, Todd Bragg, he was the drummer for Caveman's Call when I was in college. That was like my favorite band in mm. college. And so he was the drummer, and he had another percussion player, Garrett, but um, they would come and we would, we would like host them. I would book them to come play for our students and stuff. And I just thought they were, so I can't believe like Todd Bragg is, is like playing music with me. I can't believe I get to play music with him, or Kenny for that matter. So it's, all of them are, all of them found, we found our way to one another in, in weird ways, and it's just perfect. It really right. is perfect. Um, so yeah. So you didn't do like an audition kind of a No, thing I don't know do how it. to do that. Now, that's not true. BJ, who's the fiddle player, I did do a fiddle audition and I already knew him. Uh his uh his sister and and her husband Stetson, they were they were in a uh Cherry Home family band. It's a bluegrass band. It's like if you know anything about bluegrass music, when I say that, that's like legend. Like they're right. like just part of the family for sure. Uh, historically speaking, and um, Sia uh, was banjo player in the band, and and uh, um, I met BJ because Sia and Stetson were out with us on the road, and so he, he auditioned. But I'm like, bro, that's amazing! Come play with me, right? Family band over. All right, come over here, right? Uh, yeah, he's awesome. He can play everything. He's, play, he's he does a most of the electric guitar, like uh, most electric guitar work too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So one of the, uh, the interesting aspects of uh, what you call church music and performing it in larger yeah. venues and touring and doing albums and things is being the go-between between the congregation, the audience, yeah. worshiping and you being on stage. But is it about you or is it about the Man, isn't that connection? funny? Is it, a, it's know, so it's funny. A, like, I, I know, uh, again, I'm reaching backwards, but when I first got doing this, uh, you know, one of the big, big... Uh, phrases like hey man it's not about me you know it's like i, I just want to i just want to i'm not even here like lower you know humble yourself and let but man god makes us all super unique you know we're all put together in in miraculous ways you know mm -hmm. we're so different from one another but at the same time we're still are uh, we still beat the same you know it's still we're the same i need you to help me understand what god is i need i need i need someone to help me relate to the divine because without uh, flesh and bone and skin and words and and you know sound. It's like how 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 do I t even talk about such a thing? You know, I, so mm -hmm. so I understand that I have a role there. And it's it's uh in my mind it's like the moon. You know, it's like the moon is a it's just a rock until the light hits it and then it's like shining to you know. So it's like I want to reflect what the thing is, but I'm 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 present and active in and being around and available, you know? Right. I want I want to uh, do my best to allow the light to hit me well and reflect or, you know, a prism, whatever, however you want to look at it, you know? Right. Um, I, want to, I want to be present, but pointing to something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. That'd be, and I think that's what music does anyway, you know? So right. you want to be there. If, you, if you're like, hey man, it's not about me, it's not about, then, then the rest of it goes out the window. Like, well, it doesn't matter about tuning. It doesn't matter about singing. It doesn't matter about like it. Does, then it doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. just me and God. Like, I, no, it matters. It matters because you're 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 trying. Your job is to collect everybody, um, create a, a moment that we all feel together mm -hmm. and can say stuff uh, that is common among us. And and that, that takes a lot of work and, sure. and a lot of effort. Right. Right. And I got to be present to do it. So sure. Yeah. Right. So you have to be an active part of it. I mean, it's, it's true part of the deal, right? Yeah. Right. So it's not about me, but it, it, I got to do some stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> so is that? Do you view that as different from uh, you know? You've done obviously a lot of work, uh, church work as well, and worship leader work and yeah. things, and then now on big stages. Is there a difference in how you approach that? Um, yeah, um, for sure. Every like we just did a Good Friday Easter weekend, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so Good Friday and the Easter services are totally different than what you know, when we're on the road and have a, you know, hour and a half set or whatever, uh, 
it's it's we got a particular thing that we're trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. ev it's every setting is different, you know. And I I don't. I guess that's maybe the difference in doing church music as opposed to just doing music in general. Um, I don't feel like an artist. I feel I feel very utilitarian. That I have a I have a role and a function, and my function and role is to hey, this is what I'm decent at. Let me play my role here for. Uh, this moment right now and and so that always takes a little bit of effort in deciding what that moment is that you're serving right and what the people are there to to accomplish like why did we gather why are we together and then um and then uh hopefully helping everybody get get to something bigger than us sure yeah yeah right right one of the more interesting quotes that I, I read that you had said, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase, but you were talking about how difficult the job is as a church music writer. Yeah. Because uh, to use your word, the lexicon is pretty, actually pretty right. small, right? It's pretty pretty limited. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, how you communicate within such a structured framework, if you will. It's really interesting to me um, because there there are, again, as, as you're trying to... to to, to facilitate a moment, mm -hmm. you know that there, there are trigger work, handles, I guess, things that people can grab onto and go, okay, I know why I'm here and what we're doing. I understand what we're doing right now. We're, we're uh, it's like the liturgical in a sense. And, and um, it's, uh, I, I describe it as Jimmy Buffett is the problem. It's like, you gotta always take them to the ocean or the beach or the <laughs> flip flops or the whatever, you know? You, right, got, right. you gotta take them to the place that you know that we're, all gathered to go to, and and uh, that's difficult to find new ways to take somebody to the ocean right. <laughs> with flip flops. Right. So it is um, complicated, and that's why I think it's stunning when someone writes a simple song that just ignites in the church, you know, globally. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, there's this song that just like goes around the world because somebody said something super simple and an in a new way, it, just like a, just a different, just a little slight different angle to look at something. Right. And um, that's rare and, uh, and hard to do, but um, yeah, the lexicon is small and it's hard to say the same, it's hard to take them to the ocean over and over and over. Yeah. Right, right, right. So there's the, the lyrical limitation, but there's also the, the production side of it and the, yeah. the musical side of it. If, if you will. Can you go too far with that? Can you go too far oh, outside sure of what people expect? I do expect? all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean you in particular. No, I, meant, I meant the me collective. Me <laughs> uh, I'm not good at what they call moderation. <laughs> um, no, no, yeah. I, I think I probably uh, err on that side of things. Because it's because, I, I mean, there's so many, there's so many great, talented people writing songs that are super accessible and, and easily rehearsed for a Sunday morning. I mean, it's tough to get players together and mm -hmm. pull off a, a morning of, of a group singing um, that has some intentionality to it. And so it's, it's, it's amazing to me, the people that are able to write songs that like, oh, we got this, you know, 30 minutes rehearsal, we are ready, you know? Right. Uh, um, so I'm, I think we've got a lot of wonderful people doing that. And, and um, I don't feel the necessity to try to duplicate that, I mm -hmm. guess. So, um, I'm trying to do something that, like I said, it's it's it's, it's super dumb. I'm just trying to do what I what I feel. You know, it's like sure. if I feel if I feel like, man, this is worth saying right now, then um, then I'm doing it. And people resonate with it. That's fantastic. That knows that make that makes me feel functional and useful. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm in a lane over here doing the deal. Ain't no planning center, but hey, <laughs> right. we got we got some folk that right. are right. that are resonating with what is is uh, uh, sounding in my chest. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if that was a good answer or the right answer. No, it's a, it's a good answer. Yeah, it's all about connection, no matter which how far you're yeah. going, whichever direction, whichever way it might be. So I, I, I'm uh, I'm always interested to talk to uh, lyricists. Uh, well, let me take a step back. I was talking to someone the other day, uh -huh. and they were saying that they really can't write about a chapter of their life until that chapter is closed. Interesting. And they've gone beyond that. Huh. Do you, That's do you, probably smart. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably not that way. No? I'm like, oh my well, gosh. That's my question is, do you, do you approach it that way? Do you just... Is uh, it, is no, it I'm pretty much, I'm in the moment. I'm in a, a, it's so interesting to me to look backwards, and I can see me in process through um, everything. I think the... 
One of the more intriguing records to me that we did was the A Collision, and it was, um, uh, I had a, a number of people that I was near that were dealing with cancer, and it was terminal in in each case, and, and, and um, we had to say goodbye and stuff, and it was very, very hard, and it was like a, um, I can see the process and the, and then, um, and then I can also see after afterwards that how useful those songs became mm -hmm. um, um, following that. So I, I, I don't know. I, I uh, that's a smarter way to do it to process it and then be able to say something um, useful. But I, I, I'm probably a little more. Uh, Ragged. <laughs> well, but expressing it in the moment is also, I mean, it's much more direct, right? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're pretty much connecting. Maybe so. Right there with it. Yeah. Awesome. David, thanks so much for taking time to sit oh, down with no us today. This Absolutely. has been great, man. It's been a, been a pleasure to meet you, and congratulations on the new record. Sounds amazing. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the rest of the tour. Well, appreciate how, you having me. How much me. longer are you out for? Uh, we had a couple more weekends, I believe. It's, nice. been, it's been amazing. It started uh, towards the front of the year, and it's been awesome. Right. We pick back up after the summer. We, we okay. kind of do fairs and festivals. Hey man, fairs are my deal. I love those county fairs. There you go. Mm, corn dogs <laughs> all summer long. Cotton candy so, corn dogs. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nachos. Uh, so fairs and festivals over the summer, and then we hop back on this thing again uh, uh, coming up in the fall. So. And then another record. We're uh, man. We're working. We're working. Okay. I don't know if I'll do a record. I, music's so fluid now. You know. Right. I don't know. I, I, I have I have fulfilled my obligations contractually, mm -hmm. and so we'll see what's up All next. Right. Yeah. Great. We'll look forward to it. Awesome. Whatever it is. We'll thank you. Great, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thank you. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.